Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is my sixth update, and since it is November in the U.S., then that can only mean two things, uh, Thanksgiving and elections. So, yeah, it's election season in Vallis. Uh, you can see my little decorations here. I made some signs. I don't know if this is a thing in other countries, uh, but these little election campaign signs are just everywhere in October. And it is November 19th, and they're still you know, scattered all over the, the road. Remember, one candidate for one of the uh, senators just you know, put tons of these signs along the interstate, and I guess someone didn't like them, so they mowed over all of them, and you just see little, little bits of paper and everything flying around. So anyway, um, am I actually going to use these? I kind of like to, actually. Uh, just to show you a little the uh, ballast map here, you know, you start the game in the upper left, and I'm trying to think of some ways to do a little bit of world building. So with world building, I, I like to make, you know, since I don't have text, and really I don't think I would want the player to just read a wall of text, where are some ways I can do some world building, and decorations in the levels is certainly one way. So the story so far, at least I have developed, is there is an empire, uh, Ballas, that is mainly occupying this territory here on the right, and they are slowly making their way up to the left. And this town here in the upper left is where you start the game, uh, where the empire more or less is coming in. And to be honest, I haven't gotten much further than that, actually. It's one of those situations where I know the end, I know the middle, don't really know the beginning of the story yet, at least the details. Um, for those of you that remember the Temple of Idosra game, it does tie into that. So one thing I would like to do is, as you work your way deeper into the Empire territory, there are more signs that the Empire is in control. And you know, what's one way to do that? Election time. <laughs> uh, so I made up these candidates, you know, Zara and Narch. Uh, Narch is actually an Easter egg in the Towers of Valis game. So that was the... Um, the Game Boy inspired game, and there is a secret room in that in that game where you can find all these you know, discarded signs. Uh, I totally made that as an Easter egg, but now I'm thinking I probably could use them. Uh, just a little bit about me, actually. I I really can't stand politics, and I make myself have an opinion because I feel like I should vote, but it, it it's not something I really get into. Uh, these signs in particular always bug me, but I figure, you know, why not throw them in there? And as an added Easter egg, because the Vallis map is based off of North Carolina, uh, I did put the North Carolina gubernatorial signs in here. So yeah, I don't know if, you, if anyone noticed that. Uh, the map of Vallis, and here is a map of North Carolina. And if you take the map here and rotate it, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that lines up with the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So that's how I drew the map. Um, I'm not creative enough. And, you know, is creative cartography really a thing? Uh, you know, here of creative writing, um, creative cartography, that's not my area of expertise. So. I just traced the North Carolina map and rotated it, but hey, you know, it looks like a nice map, so um, do these towns actually line up with actual North Carolina towns? Not intentionally. Um, you know, the town I live in is actually off this map a little bit. In fact, really with this thing rotated here, can't really tell you exactly. I think that river here would be the Noose River, which is close to where I live, but further up. Uh, anyway, you can also see I did get more of the state manager working, and uh, I guess I have two updates for everyone. Uh, I would like to show how I, you know, implement new states because this system's working out really nicely. A little bit tedious, but certainly when issues come up, it's a lot easier to debug them. So I'm actually pretty proud of the way this is working so far. Will I feel that way when I'm done converting everything? I don't know. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, and this actually does tie into elections a little bit, is AI. Uh, in particular, deciding on a leader. 
And this also ties into the state manager too, because my current animations manager was not capable of meshing with this idea very well. Uh, but since I have a state manager, this is actually closer to what I had with the isometric game. Uh, the isometric game, I'd say, runs alongside the stencil engine, but it bypasses a lot of the core features that stencil provides. Whereas this game, I mean, you can see the code, you know, it's just even behind the window. You know, it's maybe 80% uh, coded with the visual blocks that stencil provides and 20%. You know, my own code working in the background that's usually typed up hacks. Um, and I think I mentioned this before, but I tend to like to use the visual language for very high level routines and functions, but for anything lower level like graphics management or data management or things like that, I really do prefer to type out code. Uh, but on, on, the, on the question of decision making, so here's the problem. Um, we got these two guys here, and in fact, yeah, you can see um, there's no death animation either. Let me restart the game, but this time I'll go into immortal mode. So there we go. I don't know, you can see on the bottom here, debug immortal. All right, so let me pull up that level again. I'm going to clean up these signs when I'm done with this because I don't want them here. Um, yeah, the animation, like the animations themselves are kind of rough, but as I mentioned before, I can fix that. Uh, right now, my focus is solely code. Um, okay, so Marika is now immortal. So the problem is these two guys. You see the axe guy, and the axe guy is going to stop throwing axes once he gets within a certain range. <laughs> I just have to, have to watch this for a moment. So yeah, Marika there is looking kind of bored and those two guys are just wailing on her. And there's a pixel that's kind of flashing. I'm not sure what that's about. It must be a fist. Well, anyway. Um, oh. oh, I don't have attacks. I was going to kick them. I don't have attacks. Okay. Well, anyway, the, the problem is I want these guys to communicate. So when... Yeah, see, when they're like that, like for one thing, I don't want them to walk on top of each other. The guy that's throwing an axe should stay behind the other guy. The problem is to get something like that to work, I have to have these guys communicate with each other. And when we're talking about communication, I have to find a leader. So one of these actors will control the other. That's actually how these buttons work. It's a similar idea. So... The way I'm, I'm not going to show you the code for these buttons. I mean, I'm willing to share it, um, but it, there's a lot of code in these buttons, and it, it'd just be hard to, for me to point out the interesting parts. So uh, if you want a copy of the code, I'm happy to share that. But I can tell you a little bit about, about how they work, because it's very similar to how I want these bad guys to work. So all of these buttons have the same behavior uh, called simple button, although the name of the behavior does not describe the code very well. Uh, but you know, all 10 of these button actors, or is it really 10? Nine. All nine of those button actors have the same behavior, but it doesn't make sense for every single button to sort of take control over you know, data management, uh, well, for example, how does the game know which button's highlighted so that when I press enter, you know, the, the correct action triggers? And my approach to this is once all the buttons are loaded on the screen, after a one frame delay, they elect a leader. And now by election, basically, um, I should say they choose a leader. Um, it's not a vote. Uh, basically, it's always the first button. But what I want to avoid is having another behavior that manages the buttons. You know, can I get the buttons to manage themselves? So the first button that loads steps up and takes the position of leader, and that leader is the one that manages handling, well, for example, what happens when the player presses an arrow key. So you see how the weapon button's highlighted? 
when I push the down arrow key, now the armor button's highlighted. But the, the behavior that's actually managing, you know, switching these animations is the leader, which in this case is the menu button. So there's one behavior that's managing the whole operation, and the rest of the buttons are just reporting to the leader button, which is the menu. So I, now that I try to say it out loud, I think it sounds more complicated than it really is, but if you've tried to implement buttons, you may have ran into some issues. You know, it's just how do you manage updating all the animations, responding to user input, and that kind of thing. And for me, just having everything centralized makes it easier to manage than trying to have each button, you know, more or less take care of its own state. So with the bad guys, with the bad guys, what I need to do here is I need to pick one of those actors to be the leader. And the leader can then give instructions to the other actors. Um, do I want to go as far as to trying to, you know, you know, obey some kind of like military structure where you know the highest ranking actor is the one that takes control. I could. Um, I'm really more imagining this as a problem solving approach than a simulation approach. I have a problem. Um, I need to really keep that second actor away from Marika while the first actor is fighting her. And then the second actor is the axe actor, and he can be throwing his axes in the background. There is some decision making needed because I need to make sure that the actor that cannot throw axes is not the one that's in the back. So these two actors will need to decide amongst themselves who goes in the foreground, who stays in the background. And the, the obvious decision would be to have the guy with the axe be in the background, and he can be throwing axes while the guy in front is more or less blocking like that. So what I don't want to happen is I don't want that guy to eventually creep up to the front. Yeah, like he's doing now. And now that he's in the front, you know, they're just going to do that. Which is unrealistic for one thing because they're standing right on top of each other. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> One more thing I would like to show everyone. Oh, here, there, no, now they can't get to her. One other thing I like to show is you can see I got some, some more states implemented here. That turning around is still not implemented, but I have sachet. Uh, I need to slow it down a little bit so she doesn't cover quite as much ground when she does that, but you know, that gives you a little bit more of a gentler approach. One thing I would like to do is have that, I got a sachet, I guess it's really a, a slow walk or whatever, a single step. I want that step like, I sh you know, like in Prince of Persia, where if you take a single step, it kind of rounds that off on the ledge so that you don't walk over the ledge until you're, unless you're already standing at the very edge. So let me get on the ledge here. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Flying away like a balloon. <laughs> uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> well, hmm. I was going to show you how if you stand on a ledge and take a step, she'll just walk right off. But, um,. <laughs> I have a hunch that I might have some more bugs in my system here. I think I know what's going wrong. I probably didn't move over my ledge climbing code because that code is still expecting the animation manager to be there and I disabled it. Uh, okay. Well, anyway. Pretend you saw Marika climb up a wall, and there you go. She walks off the ledge. <laughs> anyway, um, one other thing I would like to show is just how you know, what it takes to implement a new state. I think implementing the ledge climbing states will be a little more complicated, but one state we definitely do need. I'll show the game again. 
Yeah, high security compound. I'm getting kind of tired of this background here, but if I walk off, oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Died this time. I can actually start over. Yeah, me. Okay. Yeah, see how she kind of stands back up again? That's because she doesn't die. She just lands and gets back up again. Of course, she actually should be dead. Uh oh. Did she just double die? I guess so. She just kind of stands up. So I guess there's two things we need to do. Uh, we need to implement the death state, and on top of that, we need to disable controls. So how do we do that? Actually, fairly simple to, to solve both problems at once. So we're going to make a death state. I'm going to go in here to my state behaviors. By the way, uh, I have a gross of behaviors now, and after I made all those campaign signs, I almost have 250 actors. So yeah, things are blowing up here. Um, I made a template state somewhere in here. There it is. You can just duplicate that and call this um, uh, player died. <clears throat> okay, there's player death or dead. I actually made a mistake and it may be too late to fix this, but some of these are past tense like landed uh, and some of these like aiming or you know, present tense. Um, Probably shouldn't have done that, but it's a little thing. It's probably too late to fix, so whatever. Um, the default stet, stet, state name is dead. And roll call, this is now the player dead state. Okay, so to set up a state, every state has the same four events by default. Now, I can take some of these out if I don't need them. But I wanted the template to have them because almost every state's going to need them. And I did talk about this in a lot more detail in my last update. But you know, just as a sort of a brief summary, um, what a state does is manage both controls and animations. Uh, the primary responsibility of a state is to manage the animations, but also how other controls and other you know, environments interact with the actor when it's in a particular state. And one way I have this set up is that with the player control behavior, the player control just triggers different events in you know, the behavior that corresponds to a particular state. And I can disable a control simply by omitting it from the state. So you can see the idle state. Let me get idle real quick. Where is idle? Yeah, there's idle. You know, idle has some of these controls enabled so that you know, when the player presses one of these controls, this is what happens. Now, I don't really have to do anything else to set these up. All I have to do is just put the behaviors in here, and once the behaviors are there, the player's control behavior will find it. If I just simply leave them omitted, then those controls are disabled. So I don't have to worry about you know, putting you know, Boolean checks to make sure I disable certain behaviors. You know, previously, you know, the player run had some inputs, the player flying had some inputs, you know, all these like walk and run. You can see I disabled but disabled it, but originally it did handle its own input. So that made con you know, configuring inputs a mess because, for example, uh, if the inventory menu is up, I don't want you know, the player control behaviors to move the player. As you actually saw with the death sequence, when that death menu came up, you know, the player could still move because I hadn't disabled the controls yet. So there's an easy way to disable the controls. Switch the player to a state that has the controls not implemented. There we go. Now, the other thing I need to manage with dead is to call the right animation. And this can be very simple or this could be pretty complex. Um, the simplest thing to do is just to move into the animation. So uh, let me get uh, set state animation. I think it is the default one's dead. <clears throat> Let me see. Where is dead? There's the dead animation. Um, that animation doesn't make sense for landing really hard on the ground. Um, so there's actually two ways I can do this. I could make a new animation for one thing. Um, 
I could play this animation and skip the first three frames. That's probably the simplest, actually. Um, the other thing I can do is, where is the land hard animation? Uh, the land hard animation is here, and these two frames are where she gets up. Uh, obviously, that doesn't make sense if she's dead. Preventing frames from continuing is not, I think, a viable solution. It's much easier to skip frames. So it makes more sense, rather than trying to pause the animation on this second frame here, to maybe go into dead animation and you know, skip the first three frames. So there's where she's landing. Uh, that said, I kind of want to future-proof this a little bit too, and I think what makes the most sense will be just to make a completely new animation. That way, if I decide to go back and change frames later, you know, I don't inadvertently you know, draw up something that doesn't make sense. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the... Uh, where is it? I saw it a moment ago. See, I have a lot of animations here. Uh, the Land Hard animation. Let me copy it. Where's the copy? Uh-oh. Does that duplicate? Yeah, that's duplicate. There it is. I guess I just didn't click it. So instead of land hard, it'll be dead hard. <laughs> Not dead hard. Um, land dead. Oh, landed. Land dead. There we go. Okay, save that. Oh, and I need to take out these two frames. So there we go. And, and it doesn't loop. And I think this also has, uh oh, yeah, there's land dead. Do I need a collision box for this? Probably to keep her from falling through the ground, I do. Uh, is that collision box unfair? I don't know, just to, just to avoid future problems. What's the dead one have? Yeah, it's a height of 16. Okay, I'll just use that. Okay, that'll, I guess, prevent you know projectiles from hitting the air right above her and then disappearing, because that wouldn't look right. Okay, so now we got a collision box. We made an animation, land dead. Okay, so for the state, we want to set the animation to land dead. That's pretty much it, actually. So, like I said, you know, the only tedious thing about this, and is if I want to be able to transfer from one state to another state, I have to, one at a time, okay it. Um, the downside to that is it's going to be a hassle to one by one okay every single transition, and idle is going to be one of the worst actually. Um, I'm going to have to okay a lot of transitions in idle. I'm also going to have to okay a lot of transitions into the falling state. Uh, that said, it does force me to be a lot more deliberate, and that was just really the source of a lot of the worst to diagnose and solve bugs. It is moving from one state to the wrong state. So forcing myself to be deliberate, I think while it's tedious to set up now, once I get past the point where I'm trying to set up every single state, um, then the payoff will be it's a lot easier to manage. So let's check out that dead state and see if it works. Yeah, I can, I'm sure the most thrilling thing to watch here is to watch something compiling. Um, I guess amuse yourselves right now by thinking of something fun. Okay, there we go. So, High security compound once again. And it didn't work. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, um, the reason why it's not working is because I forgot to attach the behavior to the actor. Well, at least I can show the problem I'm trying to solve one more time then. Um, you can still move in this state. So, okay. <laughs> that was a stupid mistake but easily fixed. And I tell you, I do this all the time. I, I just forget to attach these things. Um, if you 
are a stencil developer and you make the same mistake, then now you don't have to feel all alone. Um, yeah, that's that thing. There we go. There's the state name. Uh, dead. And you know what I realized I actually need to do too? Is in the falling code, I need to transition to the dead state. And that should not be hard to do either. Oh. So, request the dead state. So, here's how to transition a state. Uh, I have to OK it. So allow change. And again, most of the most of the time these requests are just a simple yes, no. I can't have Boolean checks though, and this is how I'm going to implement more complicated state transitions. Um, in the updating code here, where is okay, so this is activated. Hmm. Oh, it's in the falling code. Okay, so I need to find on-ground detection. So when the player lands, here we go. Um, do I want to land or do I want to go to dead? And by the way, I really shouldn't call that dead. Um, is it too late to change the name of the behavior? Uh, yeah, we'll call it land dead because there's another dead where she just you know gets hit too many times and runs out of hit points. So I need to change roll call. And I'm going to change the default name of the state <coughs> to, I guess, land dead. I can have a multi-word state. Of course, I need to change it on Marika too, because it still says dead here. Uh, I just like to have the defaults correct. So that way, if I unattach and reattach the behavior later or something like that, it doesn't change back. Um, I did rename that state though. Okay, so that should be, yeah, land dead. Okay. So I need to transition to the land dead state, and that's an easy way to, easy thing to do. Um, when the player lands, it goes to landed. Now, this PLAND code here, that triggers right here. Um, okay, so. Here's the code where Marika lands on the ground. In the first frame after she lands, so on ground temp is true, but on, on ground is still false. That would be the very first frame that she hits the ground. Uh, the first thing we need to do is check if she fell far enough to take damage. And that's relatively simple to do. And that's right there. And of course, if she takes damage, actually apply it. A death cause will trigger the uh, the right little death message, so it's you know the the Valis Tinny's message, and at some point I don't think I check right here if she's dead or not. So I started taking out the old code, and yeah, the death cause is set to hard landing regardless of whether or not she actually died, because the actual death occurs when you know damage is taken. So at that point, she should be dead if she actually ran out of hit points. So we can check for that. Uh, where's my player is dead? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There it is. Okay. I'll tell you, I'm getting too many blocks here. So I think we can put that in the PLAND code. So if the player is dead, we'll go to land dead. Otherwise, landed. <laughs> Probably should not have set it up that way. All right, we'll give this a try. Though if it doesn't work, I'm probably gonna just fix this off screen because I don't think watching me sitting here trying to debug code is gonna be interesting. But I did want to show how this is programmed because certainly this is a common problem that you know I see you know relatively often on the stencil forum and Discord is you know how do you manage animations and in particular how do you manage them when you have a lot of them. So we'll give this one more try here and see. So take a leap of faith. Um, it really did not like that. The behavior did disable. That's good. Uh, you can't see it on screen here, but I'm getting a bunch of warnings that animation listener does not exist. Um, I might have to fix this in an update, actually. Uh, I think the problem... And this is not something I'm able to resolve very quickly. 
It is that I'll, I'll bring the there's the log. So you can see animation listener does not exist. There's code right now that's looking for the animation listener, which is the old code that I'm working on replacing, and there appears to be a conflict. So this is probably okay. Uh, I kind of wish I could show it off, but undoing the um, undoing the animations listener, I don't. That's not something I think I can do. So it, it's a little bit of a of a low point to end here, but. Again, you know, it gives me something to show on update 7. How, how is this resolved? And I have a feeling it's really only going to be resolved completely when I take out all of the old animation code and completely finish this job of updating to the new state manager. So it may take a little while, but, you know, I guess to, to end on a slightly higher point here, um, these kinds of things are easier to debug now. So I, I, I know what's wrong, I just now I have to fix it. <laughs> so that's, I guess, the best stopping point I'm going to get for now. So uh, thank you for watching, and see you next time.